How many of you have a first aid kit at home? I know we do. Now, we may not have everything in that first aid kit, but we have a first aid kit. But your first aid kit is a collection of supplies and equipment needed for emergencies. And they come in all sizes. Now, a well-stocked first aid kit is a handy thing to have. And it's used for emergencies. And it helps you respond effectively to common injuries and emergencies. And it should be readily available. It should be regularly inspected to ensure that everything in there is good, is in good condition, has not expired. So we want to make sure our uh, first aid kit is well stocked. We want to make sure it's available, and we want to all inspect it regularly. So here's some of the contents you should have in your first aid kit. You should have band-aids, you should have some gauzes, some antibiotic ointment, you should have some, um, some kind of antibiotic antiseptic wipes, cold compresses, a thermometer, um, even a defibrillator. Now, in a spiritual sense, I want to talk about a spiritual first aid kit. That's what I want to talk about, spiritual first aid kit. Ask yourself, do you have a spiritual first aid kit? And what is in your spiritual first aid kit? First thing first, you need to know that you are a child of God. You need to know that you are a child of God. Being a child of God comes with benefits. It comes with privilege. That's the first thing you need to know. And we are heirs of God, and we are fellow heirs with Jesus Christ. And you can find this in Romans 8 and 17. So by us being justified by faith and loving God, we have access to favor and assurance in God. So that's the first thing we need to recognize that you are a child of God. There's so many uh, Christians, believers, that walk around with their heads hung down and they forget that they are a child of God, that we have favor. Amen. We have favor. So no matter what type of emergency there is, no matter what type of crisis or hard times, or anything that comes our way, our God is bigger than that situation. He's bigger than that trial. He's bigger than that hard times. He's bigger than this pandemic. He's bigger than that. So there's no problem, there's no trial, no situation, no circumstance, no uncomfortable situation that's too big for our God. God can handle whatever we're facing. We need to remember that. We are a child of God. Remember that. Now, when this crisis or this emergency, this situation come, this hard time come, we don't have to feel like giving up. We don't have to feel like giving up. We don't have to feel dismayed. We don't have to be discouraged. We don't have to feel powerless and defeated. We don't even have to carry a negative attitude. We don't have to. In these situations, we need to remember first that we are a child of God. And we need to be equipped and ready. We need to inspect our spiritual first aid kit. Because the problems are going to come. The situations are going to come. The trials are going to come. The hard times are going to come. And we need to make sure our spiritual first aid kit is ready. Amen. Make sure it's intact for the trials that are going to come. Because baby, they're going to come. They're here now, and if you're not going through something right now, be ready. It's coming. Lord. It's coming. So I want to talk to you today about some items to keep stocked. Some items that we need to keep stocked before the trial come, during the trial, even after the trial. We need to keep these things stopped. The first thing is assurance of faith. 
assurance of faith. We need to have unwavering faith. Unwavering faith, trust, and stay committed to God. So many times these issues come in our lives and we want to run. We want to run from God. We want to hide from God. We want to forget about God. But I'm, I'm going to tell you something what we need to do. Let's go to James, the first chapter, the second through the fourth verse. It reads, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. As we go through these various trials, we should be thankful. We should be joyful knowing our faith which is our confidence in God, is being mature, is getting stronger. Don't, which we all do, even me, we, sometimes we take our trials personal. We, 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 we take these hard times personal. It hits us, it's, it's like a punch in the gut. Believe me, it hurts, it hurts. It could be death in the family. It could be sickness in your body. It could be a so-called friend who stabs you in the back. All these different trials. Lost a job, bankruptcy. Been there, done that. We go through these different things. But the word is telling us that these things that we go through is to make our faith stronger. It makes our faith more mature. And we'll get better and better as we go through the trials. But one thing that we need to have is that assurance in God. Our faith can't waver. It's going to hit you at first. But straighten up. Remember, what, 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 my faith is in God. I am a child of God. I have favor. It's working for my good. Thank you. Let's go to Psalm 55 and 22. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. But here's some, some instructions. We got to give that burden. We have to give that issue, that circumstance. We got to give it to God and leave it there. Leave it there. Let God handle it. I, he's bigger than that issue. He's bigger than that burden. He's bigger than the way you're feeling. Yes. Give it to God. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are a call according to his purpose. Everything we're going through, God is working it out. If he's working it out. And by us being justified by faith and loving God, once again, we have access to favor and assurance in God. We have a guaranteed victory. Right there, we ought to praise God on that, on that part right there. We have a guaranteed victory. It's working out for our good. Amen? It's working out for our good. So the first thing I said that we need to keep stopped is that assurance of faith. Number two, this is something we all got to work on, including me. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Thank you, God, for growth. A positive attitude. A positive attitude. Numbers 11 and 1 says, Now the people complain about their hardships and the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burned among them, and consume some of the outskirts of the camp. Check out the Israelites' attitude. Complaining, grumbling, fearful, disobedient, feeling some type of way, wanted to be back in Egypt after God made a way through the Red Sea, after God feeding them and, and just delivering them. And still yet, they complain. 
They complain. They murmur. Got to the point where well, we should we should have stayed, left us back in Egypt, Moses. No one or nothing can make you have a good or bad attitude. And our trials, our thinking, our thinking can lead to depression, anxiety, anger, or it can lead to peace. Think about that. Our thinking. Our thinking. Is it leading you to depression? Is it leading you to anxiety? Is it leading you to anger? Or is it leading you to peace in the Lord? Also, our thinking can lead us to joyfully praising the Lord. We have to make a practice of thinking positively. It's a practice. It's a thing that we have to practice, we have to do. There is power in our thoughts. There is power in our thoughts. The minute you start thinking negative, the minute you start thinking doubt, the minute you start thinking, feeling some type of way, you need to rebuke that thing and resist it. Don't let the devil uh, put thoughts in your head. If you just need to say the name of Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Rebuke that. Resist it. Just start calling on the name of Jesus. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Instead, instead of focus on the problem, focus on God. Focus on his track record. See, this is what the Israelites should have been doing. Focusing on what God had done for them. Let's not murmur and complain. Let's practice having a positive attitude. Let's practice that. Let's remember God's track record. There's so many things. We have testimonies of what God has done in our lives. God has brought us through some things. God has delivered us from some things. God has kept us and still keeping us right now. That's what we should focus on. Think on positive things. Let's not have an Israelite attitude. Your attitude can delay your victory. Look at them. This was supposed to be an 11-day journey. 11-day journey ended up being a 40-year journey. So instead of having a negative, defeated, woe-is-me attitude, we should have a joyful, hopeful, and victorious attitude because it's working for our good. Remember, you are a child of God. The third thing that we should keep stopped, like I say, we keep it stopped before, during the trial, even after the trial, is wisdom. 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 Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Many of us have remembered this verse and memorized this verse as little kids. But it's more to it than memorizing it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding. So many times... These hard times come on us. These situations come. The issues come. And what we do, we go to Kiki, Ray Ray, Shanique, all these people instead of seeking God. This is what we do. We put our trust in everybody else. We'll put our trust in social media for answers instead of going to God. And sometimes God will send a person to give you wise counsel, to give you words from, from God. But what we do, we go to everyone else. We have to trust in God. We have to trust in God. We have to seek him for guidance. We have to go to God in prayer. We can't go to everybody and then we'll go to the weakest link. We'll go to our weakest link. We'll go to our unsaved buddies and sometimes other associates. Seek and trust God. And he will guide you. 
He won't take you far out. He won't take you left, right. He won't steer you wrong. But if we just seek God and trust in him, he'll give us directions. He'll give us directions. Don't knock, don't knock the man or woman of God when they have something for you from the Lord. Don't knock that. Associate with those who are wise. Associate with those who are, are strong in their faith in God. That's who we ought to associate ourselves with. Amen? Amen. Wisdom. The next couple of things. Joy, prayer, and thankfulness. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It says rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, whether good or bad, through hard times, through that emergency, through this pandemic right now, we ought to be rejoicing, ought to be joyful, ought to be praying, we ought to be thankful. Not when everything is going good. But this says always, continually, in all circumstances. You know, it's funny. I think I said this before. We want to use God as a sugar daddy. We, 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 we're in our issue. We're in our mess or we're in a circumstance or uh, something is going on. And, and we, we leave God. We leave God, we, we forget about God, we forget about our prayer, we forget about our joy. Mm. But even during that, we need to continuously rejoice. We need to continuously pray and give thanks. Because, you know, it could be worse. Yes, yes. It could be worse. Yes, it could be worse. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. A thankful heart is a powerful thing. A thankful heart is a powerful thing. When we're going through our emergencies, this is not a time to slacken our prayers. This is not a time to slacken our joy. The word says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James 5 and 16. God gives us the promise in James 5 and 16 and then he offers the example in James 5, 17 through 18. 17 verse says, Elijah was a human being. Even as we are, he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crop. The word provides us with a flesh and blood example, James 5 and 16. God shows us that we can pray with great power and effectiveness. Yes. This kind of praying is not beyond us. Yes. God gives us James 5 and 16 to deal with our discouragement Hallelujah. and to strengthen our faith. We need to go back and remember God's track record. We need to go back and remember his track record. We need to pray and start thanking God in advance for our victory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. If he fought you through the last trial, he pray you through this one. So we need to praise God in advance. Praise God in advance because we have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I have favor and I have assurance in God. I am a child of God. So when these issues and problems come, I need to remember, you need to remember that we can be joyful. We need to pray. We need to pray continuously. Give God thanks in all our circumstances, in all our situations. We need to. 
We need to, this is, this is what's going to build our faith in God. This is what's going to prepare us for the next one. It's a ne another trial is going to come. Another circumstance is going to come. Another issue is going to come. So we'll be ready for the next one. Stronger. Stronger. Wiser. For the next one. I want to talk to you about the last thing that we need to keep stopping. And that's the word of God. That's the word of God. 2 Samuel 22 and 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. His word is flawless. His word won't lead you astray. It's so imperative at this time, this word. It's so imperative to study this word, to read this word, to meditate on this word, to hide this word in our hearts. See, this is what we need to speak to our situations. This is what we need to speak to our circumstances. This is what we need to speak to during our trials. We need to speak God's word. We need to speak God's word to our situation because God's word is living. It's living, it speaks life, and it's active. Speak God's word to your situation. Speak his word. Speak his word. So when the next time an emergency come your way, next time a trial come, Next time a circumstance come, next time a hard time come, check out your spiritual first aid kit. Check out your assurance in God. Check out your wisdom. Check out your, your, your positive attitude, your joy, your prayer, your thankfulness, the word of God. These things will help you during that circumstance. These things will help you during that hard time. Yes. During that trial. These are the things that, that are going to help you. Check them regularly. Hallelujah. Check them regularly. Thank you, Make God. sure you're stopped in these. Hallelujah, Make sure your faith is unwavering. Thank you. Remember to pray. Remember to have joy. Rejoice always. Remember to give thanks. God honors that. Thank you, God. He honors that. Remember to keep the word of God. Yes. Remember to seek wise counsel. Mm. Remember to trust in him. Yes. Trust in God. Trust in him. Even during this hard time, oh, during these confusing times, during this pandemic, Trust in God. Yes, Lord. Keep God first. Focus on God. Don't let this, don't, don't let this steer you away from God. This is the time to draw closer to Him. This is the time to draw closer to Him. Hallelujah. Remember your first aid kit. Make sure you have all the components. We all have experienced hard times. If you haven't, you will. You will. It's coming. Sometimes we face one or two or more. Hallelujah. All at the same time. Yes, yes. But hold on to God. Stay focused. Glory. Stay focused. We have a guaranteed victory. It may not turn out the way we want it to turn out. But we have a guaranteed victory. Remember, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. Thank you, Lord. you are an heir of God. You are a fellow heir of Jesus Christ. Remember that. You have favor and assurance in God. So I encourage you to make sure you keep stocked on these things. Amen. Stay stocked. Stay ready. Stay ready. Stay equipped. Stay ready. And as I close out, I just want to 
Say this prayer. Just pray with me. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, God, for a guaranteed victory, God. God, even though we have trials, Lord, even though we have circumstances, we know that you're with us, Lord God. Help us to stand firm in our faith, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to stay equipped and ready, Lord God. Father God, forgive us, Lord, of any sins. Forgive us of any transgressions, any iniquities, Lord God. Oh, Father God, be with us. Cover us with your blood, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we know it's working for our good, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to rejoice always. Help us to pray continually, Lord. Help us to give thanks in our circumstances, God. Oh, God, help us to hide your word in our hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For your word is flawless. And you shield us, Lord God. Help us to speak your word to our situations, God. For your word is living. And God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We know it's done, Lord. We thank you for keeping us. And Father God, Lord, we pray for those, Lord, that aren't saved, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you touch their hearts and their minds, God, to receive your salvation, God. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you. We praise you in advance, God. We praise you in advance, but we have the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We thank God on today. Hallelujah. Thank God for Lady Harris. Amen. Letting us know that we need to be equipped and ready. Amen. Being equipped and ready. Hallelujah. Because you never know. Glory to God. You never know when you're going to need, amen, that spiritual first aid kit. And you never know, glory to God, what all you may have to bring out of it. So she encouraged us, encouraged us to make sure that we keep it stopped. Amen. Before, during, and after. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's what we're going to have to do on today. We're going to have to be equipped and we're going to have to be ready because we never know. Glory to God. We never know. Hallelujah. When. Amen. We're going to need to, to lean and depend on God. We never know what the situation, what the problem, what the issue, Lord God, is going to bring our way. But one thing that we can have confidence in is we can have confidence in God. Hallelujah. Lord God, we can have confidence, come on now, in our spiritual first aid kit that when we go and reach in there, Amen. No matter a shot of a doubt that whatever, we know we've been stocking it. So we know that it's ready. We know that it's equipped. Come on, somebody. Amen. So we know we can go in there for our assurance of faith. We know we can go in there, amen, and pull out wisdom and joy and, and prayer. And then we know, amen, that we can rely on the word of God. Glory to God's name. And so we thank Lady Harris on today. Glory to God for that, for that message. Glory to God. Also, amen, another rainbow word in this season, in this time. Glory to God. Listen, let me encourage you, amen, that you never know when we have to be ready. This pandemic, glory to God, called everybody off, amen. Nobody was expecting, nobody was ready for what happened. Glory to God. Amen. Even the church wasn't ready. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. If, if, if truth be told, amen, we weren't ready. Glory to God. Glory to God. But we know that, but we know one thing. Glory to God. That next time that we will be equipped and we'll be ready. And even as we're going through, come on now, somebody. Amen. We're asking God, God, feel our spiritual first aid kits in our life. So that we can be a help to somebody, amen, that may not be equipped already. And that's what it boils down to. Glory to God. Being able, amen, to be an aid 
Amen. To be able, glory to God, to be that good Samaritan to somebody else. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. And so as we continue, amen, to let God have his way. As we continue, glory to God, amen, to lean in and depend on God. Let us keep our spiritual first aid kits ready. Let us every now and again, glory to God, uh, do, do an inspection to make sure everything is in there that we need. Is your prayer stocked up? Is your faith stocked up? Is your joy stocked up? Is your love stocked up? Come on now, somebody. Is your temperance stocked up? Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Is your patience stocked up? Come on now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Every now and again, we got to do an inspection to make sure that everything is in there that we need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so on today, amen, as we close out the service, we do not want to end the service, amen, without inviting somebody to know Jesus as their personal Savior. If that's you on today, amen, and you want to know him as your personal Savior, or, amen, you may be in a backsliding condition. Glory to God. I want you to repeat, amen, after me, glory to God. Say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he rose from the dead and that he's sitting on the right hand of God right now making intercession for me. I ask Jesus that you come into my heart. I want to live for you. My friend, if you pray that prayer, we believe that you've been born again. We believe, glory to God, that you've been, if you were backslidden, amen, that God has reclaimed you back into the fold. Find yourself a good Bible-based ministry and start serving God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we thank you once again for being with us. Hallelujah. We pray that the rest of your day be blessed of the Lord. We pray that God's favor be upon you and your family. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we continue to pray that you continue, amen, to pray for us as we pray for you. Remember, glory to God. Be safe. Glory to God. Be kind. But above all, saints of God, listen now. But above all, saints of God, continue to be in God. Glory to God. May God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Amen. I wish I could say this. Amen. I used to say this all the time when we closed here at All Nations. I used to say hug someone. Amen. And, and uh, tell them that I love you. Nothing you can do about it. But listen, send someone a virtual hug. Y'all know how we do with those GIFs. Amen. Send someone a virtual hug and say, listen, I love you. I'm hugging you right now. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. And go in peace.